Greetings folks, Andrew Stover from ChiefWino.com and today I am joined by Beth Wolf from Siema Wines and we are here at Panache Restaurant, newly opened in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Beth, how are you? Great, thank you for having me on your blog. I am really excited because you have brought me something that I have not seen before. Well, I brought you a really interesting grape from Northern Italy. Um, it's a wine made from a grape called Ruque. Okay. And it's not well known at all outside of the Piedmont area in northern Italy. Okay, so Piedmont area, Barolo, mm -hmm. Moscata di Asti. Mm -hmm. Okay. Piedmont's gotcha. really known for some big reds. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, Barolo is probably one of the more famous wines in the area. They call it the king of wine and the wine right. of kings. But in any case, Ruque is not as well known, and um, for good reason. Up until just a few years ago, it was not exported much at all. Hmm. It was consumed exclu exclusively in the area where it's produced, which is um, in Asti, uh, seven little vi villages that surround Asti. Asti Grow Ruge, mm -hmm. and um, it's very well regarded and well loved in that area, and it's starting to get a bit of a U.S. following. Cool. So this is from what's the name of the, the producer? The name of the producer in this? is Cantina Sant Agata, okay. and they're in an area called Scurzolengo. Cantina Sant Agata. Yes. The name Ruge. of the bottling is Na Vota. Okay. It means olden times, and that's a reference to the antiquity of the grape itself mm. and to the vines. It smells really nice. Thanks. It's got a lot of floral, uh, floral aromas, rose petal, lots of tart cherry. Kind of spicy too. Yeah. The nice thing about Ruque is that it's pretty um, compatible with a wide variety of foods, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to compare Italian grapes to anything French or international. Sure. But that's definitely the tendency for people, especially Americans. And so even though the winemaker gets upset with me when I say it... <laughs> I what, what do you think it's it's like? I think it's like Pinot Noir a little really? bit. Really? Not well, necessarily... Well, then that's going to go over very well with people. Not necessarily in flavor, but in, in body weight and alcohol and versatility with food. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really hard sometimes to pair foods that are salty or sweet or tart or a variety of those mm. things. And it's very acidic. I mean, it's very fresh. Um, so I can definitely see where this would be very food friendly and go with a wide variety of foods. Um, mm, I really do like it. And it does remind me a little bit of Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So uh, The winemaker also insists that it's a great pair to Asian food. Really? And I don't know if that's exactly what I would do with it, but he swears up and down that sushi is the thing. Sushi? sushi. Like sushi rolls? No, like um, sashimi. Okay. I guess the fattiness of the fish okay. maybe yeah. is, you know... With perhaps salmon or tuna, I can definitely see that. But right. with some other fish, I'd, I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not a big red fan with, with fish, mm -hmm. uh, except for heavy, fatty fish, certainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, salmon, grilled salmon, if you're talking about you know, cooking right. uh, the fish, that's always great with Pinot Noir. I mean, that's what they do in the Pacific Northwest, is they pair the salmon with Pinot Noir. So. It's classic. Yeah, classic. Do you like think it. it's a little bit spicy, cinnamon spice kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Not spicy with heat, but spicy with flavor. And that's always the overriding mm. characteristic that I get from it. It's very nice. I love it. And Thanks. so regionally, they love it too, and they're hoping that in the U.S. Um, there will become more of a following. Well, carry on, carry on. Are there a lot of... Um, Producers growing this? 22 producers. Only 22. In seven villages. So um, it's really a... It's a small-scale wine for certain. Very small scale. Um, and there's only a couple that export it all. And how many do you have in your portfolio? Just Is this, this the one. Only one? Mm -hmm. Wow. He makes a couple of different bottlings, but just this producer. Cool. And so how widely available is this? I mean... Um, it's available in gourmet groceries and small retail markets. And okay, around here, or do it's you? It's pretty do easy to find in the in this area and also in New York. Okay, so mm -hmm. New York, there's availability. Mm -hmm. What's uh, like a retail price point on this? It's under twenty, maybe about oh seventeen or eighteen dollars. Not bad. I mean, because Pinot Noir is getting more and more expensive. Way I mean, expensive. good bottlings. Certainly, mm -hmm. there are plenty of really horrible bottlings out there that are taste like plonk um, but this is very nice I mean if, so if you're looking for something light something interesting uh, perhaps you like Pinot Noir so Ruque from the Piedmont area of northern Italy thanks for watching